Yeah. Yep, it works. What's happening everyone? Welcome back to the workshop. Now in this video, I'm gonna share a prototype leg voice build that I'm working on. Um, I've wanted to add a leg voice to my workbench for the longest time, but I couldn't justify paying the big prices for those leg voice kits. So I wanted something I could build myself and it had to be completely made of timber, easy to build and super, super strong. That was the design remit I set myself so I could share it with you guys and hobbyists and woodworkers everywhere I could build this themselves and it would work and do the job. So no metal parts required, no welding, none of that metal work. I've seen some guys build their own homemade kits and they use the screws off scaffolding legs and they work fine, but there's still some welding, some metal work involved. I wanted just to build a leg voice that you could build with your hand tools or some of the machines in your woodworking shop that you would already have and that it would work and function as a proper leg voice. And this one does, and it has a serious clamping force. So. I've got to this stage of the build. I didn't record the first start part of the build, but it's extremely simple. I'll take you through it and explain it. That will be good enough. I wasn't sure whether this concept was going to work or not, so I wanted to test it first before I showed it to you guys. And it is going to work, so now we need to refine it. So we'll do that in this video. So I'm going to disassemble it. I'll take you over, give you a look. I'll explain the principle of how this bench voice works or this leg voice works. Then we'll disassemble it and we will tidy it up, get it into its final shape in this video and then we'll put it all back together and we'll see what this is going to look like. So let's do it. Okay guys, this is the mechanism of the voice itself. So you have a close up on it there now. So it's essentially a cam lock or a cam clamp system. Now you've seen cams before, you've definitely come in contact with these. You would have seen them on bicycle wheels, quick release bicycle wheels or on the saddles, the cam on the side of the saddles, you will see have seen cam bolts and there's actually cam lock woodworking clamps as well. It's a very, very simple principle. So you have a circle, that's your pin and then you have an offset bigger circle that bulges forward from the pin. So. Once it wrote, the pin cannot move, so this is locked in place. It cannot go backwards or go forwards because it's pinned here. This piece is mortised and tenoned through the leg and through the frame of this, so it's locked in place. So as you rotate it around, you can see it rotates around this point, so you have about an inch here, out to about two and a half inches here. So as I put this down, it forces against the timber, and as this cannot go backwards, this has to go forwards and that's how you get all your clamping pressure. So it works the exact same principle as a cam lock or cam bolt. So nice and simple, locks in place like that. And as you can see from the clip at the start of the video, it has a serious clamping pressure. And I haven't added any leather or cork to this yet. And that will grip the material even more. So it's made from 18 millimeter or three quarter inch birch ploy. It's laminated, so I have three boards together. The handle is also made from three boards. I'll give you a close up of that in a second. But this is just a rough rundown of how it works. So you can see we have a pin in here as well, which pins this board so it can't pull forward. So again, this has to go this way with the cam. And like I say, it's nice and simple. It's all just built from plywood. Super simple to make, super strong, and you have yourself a leg voice. No metal work required. And uh, yeah, it is a pretty powerful voice. So let's, I'm gonna disassemble this now. I'll give you a closer look at all the components and uh, we're gonna refine this. So I need to refine the shape of the handle. I need to put a taper cut into the voice itself. I need to put a chamfer on the top of it to make it look nice. We get everything looking nice and pretty and uh, yeah, we'll reassemble and we'll see what we're left with. Okay, so this is the total of our components and as you can see, it's very, very simple. So we have the main leg voice itself. Again, it's just a laminated section of three boards. We put a mortise or a, ten, a mortise in um, the middle of it here, the width of our three quarter plywood. There is our cam lever. So again, it's three boards glued and screwed together. You leave out the center section here, which gives you enough room for your mechanism to operate. And then you have your tenon board, I suppose we'll call it, for want of a better word, which goes through your leg and through your leg voice itself. 
there's your pin that your cam rotates around and this pins it behind your leg voice. Now, obviously there's one downside to this. We don't have the big range of motion that a standard leg voice would have that's on a screw that can go really wide out. But this one has a range of jam tight to the bench out to about two inches. Now, I'm working on the mechanism. So we have a pin here. We could make this pin hole a lot smaller and drill a series of holes and use a metal rebar. So that would be good and strong. And that would give us a range of motion so this could move out through the leg and we would have a range of motion between each set of rebar holes. I think that would be the best way to go. So this hole might be a little bit large and uh, I'll explain all that to you when we're reassembling anyway. You can see exactly what I mean. But I wanna put this out to you guys for us to see what you guys think of it. And um, yeah, see if any of the YouTube community out there can come up with some ideas about making this a bit more functional because it really does work it will save you guys a lot of money it's a really elegant i think design for our leg voice i've not seen one built like this yet and uh, yeah no metal working required so nice and handy cheap cost effective it's only the price of a piece of three quarter birch ploy and you have yourself a super strong leg voice so what we want to do now is we want to cut everything to its final dimension so it's only rough cut now in place so this is only a slab so we want to put a tapered cut on our leg voice itself. We want to put a nice little chamfer on the top. It's just a decorative chamfer that you would see on other leg voices. Then we want to shape our handle. Now I'm not going to shape it too much. I just want to put a nice little curve in the back of it here and then sand everything up. We need this flat part because that sits against our voice. The front of our cam is flat. That rotates over the curve and then the flat part locks in. So that's important for the mechanism. So we don't need to do too much of this. Just shape it up, sand it up. And uh, yeah, that's what we're going to do in this video. So let's crack on and do that. Okay, this is the back of our leg voice then. And I had some breakout cutting the mortise. So again, it's only a prototype. So I can look at maybe making that a little bit neater on the finished version, but uh, it's on the back of the leg voice. It's not near where we're going to be clamping. So it's not that big an issue. Now I glued and screwed this. So when I was making this last night, glued it all together and put a screws in it just to clamp it, just so I could continue on. And I didn't need to wait for the glue to set up but the glue has set up now, so I need to pull these screws out now that I have my final dimensions. So I'm gonna taper cut it to here. So there's my center line, it's 50 mil or two inches either side of center. So it's 100 mil or four inches will be the foot on this. And then we'll be out to the top up here. So it'll be classic bench voice or leg voice. A look with that taper that goes all the way up. So I need to pull all these screws back out now and take this to the band. So cut this, then we'll take the hand plane to it smooth up the sides and that's more or less the leg voice ready to go apart from a bit of sanding and a chamfer on the top of it. So let's rock on and do this. Bit of mis a mistake in all my excitement. I should have cut the chamfer first while I had a nice straight edge, but I have the piece that I cut off and I can, I had one perfectly straight edge that I ran over the jointer. That was to go against the miter saw fence so that I could cut this 45 degree chamfer in the top of the leg voice. And uh, so I should have done that first, but not to worry, we still have the piece. I'm going to put it back on, make sure everything is nice and square and cut this chamfer. So cut the chamfer first, then cut the taper. It's just the excitement. Here we go. Okay, there's our chamfer cut and we have our tapered leg. So we kind of have that classic um, leg voice look now, which is what we're going for. And the sun is going in and out, so it's probably playing havoc with the camera, so apologies. But uh, I'm going to put this in the voice now and straighten these two edges with the hand plane. Then we can sand this guy up and he's ready to go.
Okay, our leg voice is ready to go then. So we're gonna, we have our taper, we have our chamfer. It just needs to be sanded and I've just added the screws back in. So that's that sorted. So it's just ready for final sanding now. We leave that to one side. Now the next job we have to do is the lever or the cam itself. I'm not sure the final design on this. Um, there's obviously a more elegant uh, design than this, but I need a flat section here and a flat section here. So I'm just gonna take a little curve out of the back of it. And then we take this to the spindle sander. We get it all nice and uh, rounded over. And uh, that'll be kind of it. Then it's just a case of sand this and we're almost ready to put this back together. Okay guys, we are all sanded up and good to go. And the absolute beautiful thing about this high quality birch ploy is it comes up silky, silky smooth. So you can build absolutely beautiful stuff out of this plywood. And uh, like I say, it is furniture grade. So if you've not come across birch ploy before, definitely check it out. Um, it is an unbelievably high grade plywood. And like I say, you can get a silky smooth finish on it. And you could build an entire workbench out of it and you would have a beautiful workbench. So. I'm gonna hit this with some boiled linseed oil. It's gonna yellow it up a bit, just to match my workbench, just to blend it in a small bit. And uh, yeah, we'll get all this on, and we'll start to reassemble, and I'll take you through some more of the design. Let's do it. So you can see it has a really nice face on it. Um, it's a really high quality plywood, and it looks great with a bit of oil on it. Now we're just gonna apply this liberally enough. Okay, we're almost ready to reassemble this voice then and get it working again. Now, there is one thing we have to consider and we have a point of wear here. So this is where the cam rubs against the leg voice. So, and it presses into it. So that's eventually gonna wear down over time. So in order to counteract that, I have a bit of brass plate here. Now this is the only bit of metal I'm gonna use on this. You can buy this in a square exactly like this from any craft store anywhere. It's very, very easy to come by and very, very easy to cut with the snips. So I'm just gonna cut a bit of brass plate. I'm gonna put it either side of our mortise and uh, yeah, that should help with the wear. And it also should help the plywood slip along the brass so the cam work that little bit better, at least in theory anyway. So. I'm going to put two pieces either side. Now we'll just mark this and we'll cut one strip. Okay, we're just getting ready to reassemble this now. I don't think I went through this piece, the cam itself, um, just how it was created. I think I told you it was three pieces of ploy, which it was. The center piece, as you can see, you leave cut out. So I cut that at 45, so it starts about here and it's at a 45 degree angle. I also put a 45 degree cut on our tenon piece or our adjuster. I'm not sure what we call that yet, but we'll just call it our tenon adjuster or something for now. So that you allow, so you can, you can see the mechanism there. You want to make sure that you allow clearance in there for this to operate when you're assembling. So it's nice and simple. I glued, screwed this together, drew out my circle, cut it on the bandsaw when everything was glued together. So you're cutting both pieces at the same time. Then I took it to the drill press with a forstner bit and drilled a 32 mil hole straight through. I just put in another, I put a block back in. So an off cut apply will back in here to stop this flexing together when it's been pressed so the hole is dead straight. And then just line up your hole and drill it straight through that, through that file as well. You can actually put that in there and drill straight through the whole lot with the drill press. And then you know you're good and lined up. So that's it. Let's get this thing assembled. So just slot in our tenon piece. Put in our pin back there. Just 
slide on our leg voice. Now, my bench is offset. A lot of woodworking benches, you'll see the face of the leg will be flush with the side of the workbench. This particular workbench has an apron that hangs over the side, so it's a four by two or two by four. So all I need to do is put a block on the bottom so that this works. So uh, I get a two by four block now in a minute and we'll add it on there. So let's get our cam in place. These are just pieces of pine. I turn on the lathe. I'm going to laminate some plywood and turn them later. So uh, this will do for now. And that's our pin. Yeah, let's get our block in place. Okay, everything is assembled. I just have my block at the bottom, so that's important for clamping to keep everything nice and parallel. I'm gonna come up with another mechanism that we can extend the blocking mechanism out to keep everything parallel so that we can get a nice big range of motion on this voice. 90% um, of things are gonna be planing on a bench in woodworking is gonna be somewhere around the two inches anyway, so you don't need a massive range of motion. Three, four inches would be loads on a leg voice. That would nearly allow you to do everything you wanted to do. But uh, yeah, so it's together now. I'll just give you a demonstration one more time. Now bear in mind that there's no cork or leather faces on any of this stuff. It's perfectly smooth timber against perfectly smooth timber. But as you can see, if I was strong enough, I could lift up this bench. <coughs> so it gets a serious amount of clamping force. Here we go. Okay, just to give some of you guys a look at the benefit of having a leg voice such as this and why you would use one or need one. Well, you can clamp long lengths of board either horizontally or vertically and you can use your bench as a clamping mechanism. So I have dog holes across the front of my apron now that I can sit boards on and I can clamp them with my leg voice. So if I wanted to dimension this long piece of walnut, it would only be a case of dropping it onto the dog right there into my clamp locking that down and now my board is clamped along its length and I can work and plane away here dimensioning that timber so as you can see now you're using your entire bench as a clamping face with the dogs to support it you can support any length of timber and you can also go vertically from the floor all the way up which is nice okay guys this is my cam lock leg voice idea it is a prototype it's a working prototype it's not fully functioning yet it has a few bugs that has to have to be ironed out but the concept is good it works and it has a serious clamping force the only thing now that has to be worked on is the adjustment mechanism so we need a bar for the bottom so that this thing can be pulled out parallel shoved in parallel and you pop your pegs in place then to get your range of motion and your clamping force at the minute, if you pull it out and you try to clamp something that's oversized, so say greater than two inches, you have a serious amount of force on the cam and it will spring back up. So that's something to think about. If you wanted to really flex that plywood, you would need a pinning mechanism to pin your cam arm down here. So that might be something I might add to it, is a way of locking that arm in place once you get to the bottom. Um, so a nice simple mechanism, maybe some sort of a a lock that you can just pull over behind the back of it once it's in place and that will sort that problem. Another thing that has to be changed is these pine pins. Now, I just took a bit of two by four, stuck it on the lathe and span this just to turn some pins nice and quick and handy for proof of concept. Pine is way too soft and it compresses. So you begin to lose your clamping force with pine because you're compressing that pin and that pin and it's starting to move. So the range of motion increases and the piece begins to slip. Other than that, it works, it, it, the, the concept is good. So uh, yeah, I just wanted to put this out there to the YouTube woodworking community to see what you guys think of it and um, let you guys run with the design if you wanted to pick it up and try something out. It works, it's strong, it is cheap and it is efficient and it's easy to make. There's no welding, there's no metal parts required apart from those two little brass strips I put there. But really, I don't even think they are really required. Um, it's not going to wear that much. It's not going to be like your, this thing is going up and down a hundred times a day. It's only when you're going to use your leg voice that you need to clamp this. So yeah, there we go guys. That is a cam clamp or cam lock leg voice. What do you think of it? Okay, there we go. That's my cam lock leg voice prototype. I just wanted to get it out there and share it with you guys. Get some feedback on it, get some ideas, get it out there and see what you guys think of it. Like I say, the design brief for building this was to build a 
leg voice completely from timber with very few moving parts with a really powerful clamping force that was cheap and easy to make and that anybody any enthusiast, any hobbyist could make in their own garage or shed or any woodworker out there could put together in a day and you get yourself a leg voice. No welding, no metal parts, no screws, no wheels, no bushes, no bearings, nothing like that. Just a simple, effective cam mechanism to lock boards against your bench. I think we've achieved that. There is a few bugs to be worked out with it, so um, I will continue to work on this over the next while to perfect the design and I'll keep you updated on it. But I'll let you guys run with it if you want to, Ch try it out. And uh, when you're designing anything, there's always three considerations, the cost of the materials, the intricacy of the design and the labor involved. And cheap materials, simple design, so it requires more labor. That's kind of the way these things work. So it requires just a little bit more labor to make the adjustment, to pull the pin, adjust it, and reinsert your pin. You don't have a wheel. It's not like a bench craft uh, leg voice where you have that beautiful spinning action, super smooth. You can just spin that wheel and it locks straight against your bench. But it's gonna cost you 400 quid, plus your labor, plus your timber to get that installed into your bench. And uh, like I say, I wanted this one for a hobbyist or an enthusiast to be able to make over a Saturday or over a weekend and just the cost of a sheet of plywood. That's all is involved. So there you go, guys. Let me know what you, you think in the comments below. Any questions you have, be sure and stick them down there. I will get back to you. So that's it, cam lock leg voice. I'll talk to you later.